again, which is the largest fire burning in our state. Let's listen in. Uh, there's still some very rough topography. Fire is still in and amongst the homes, and the threat of fire crossing 34 is still very realistic. So firefighters out there uh, working hard, and uh, over the next coming days, we do have some challenging weather with possible thunderstorms uh, coming in, and those thunderstorms initially provide very challenging winds for us. So even though we're having some successes, there's still a lot of challenges out there. I need folks to still respect uh, the closures and the evacuations uh, while this firefight's still going on. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Jason Coyle. I'm one of the operations section chiefs for Southwest 30 Team 1. I'm gonna go around the fire starting on Highway 34 and let you know in a little bit more detail the, the efforts that are going on right now and then talk about some of the, the contingencies that we're preparing for. So along Highway 34, from where the, the western edge of the fire that it's reached Highway 34, all the way back to the east, uh, the fire where the fire ties into the canal road, that piece that we put black on the map yesterday, where it's a controlled edge, all of that is looking really good. And what I mean by looking really good is the amount of green pockets from the where the unburned fuel is adjacent to the structures or adjacent to the to the the values, the homes in there, has been reduced or the fire has been put out along those edges and we expect to add some more containment along Highway 34 back towards the canal road. Uh, north of the canal road where the hand line went up on the east side of the fire above Masonville, tied back into Green Ridge and then went all the way north to the Cameron Peak fire in the far northeast corner of the, of the actual Alexander Mountain fire. That line is holding Crews are continuing to patrol that line and to ensure that there's no rollout, snag, anything that could cross the line and, and you know, cause the fire to continue to move east above those homes that are situated just over the edge of that ridge and then the, the larger number of homes that are further down the slope in Masonville. Um, from the, where the fire meets the Cameron Peak Fire on the northeast corner across to what's called Jug Gulch, uh, which is a gulch that runs that runs the drainage that runs north towards Spruce Mountain. The fire is checked up along there, along a, a two-track road inside the Cameron Peak Fire. So you know, now that there's no timber in there and those grassy fields that did move to that, but they had scouts go all the way back to the Junk Gulch area from the east side all the way to basically midway on the Cameron Peak Star Road on the north side of the Alexander Mountain Fire. And that fire is checked up there. We're going to add some what we call road is line, where it shows we're using road as a control feature. And they'll continue to patrol that and make sure nothing gets across it, but looking real good. Um, yesterday I talked about a fire moves one mile into the into the Cameron Peak fire scar, that that would cause us to reevaluate whether that was a effective control feature. Right now it looks like that is going to be an effective control feature, which is a big win because it gives us a large area that we're going to have to focus efforts on in the near future. Uh, west of the junk Gulch, where the fire activity was most pronounced yesterday, all the way across that the, the, the northern edge of the fire until it goes south into the Cedar Park area. That edge of the fire is also looking really good where it's bumped into the Cameron Peak fire. So we'll continue to patrol it and ensure that it doesn't move, but so far all indications are that the Cameron Peak fire will hold. Going south from the, um, the northwestern corner of the fire, all the way until you leave the community of Cedar Park and get on that really steep slope above Highway 34. Efforts over the last several days have been on point protection. So as fire moves around the community, it's been, hey, protect the home, go on and protect the next home. Now what they're working on doing is connecting the dots, basically. So you have all these pieces of fire that you put out around the homes, and then you have unborn, unburned portions between them. If we were looking across this field and seeing those portions, it'd be really easy to figure out what's where. It's not that way on the ground. So a lot of effort is being put into tying those pieces of, of burned areas together to prevent the fire from moving further west into the more of the, the Cedar Park subdivision. So now below Cedar Park and to the east of the road that where you access Cedar Park, they're near Drake. The fire is continuing to flank, which just means that it's moving perpendicular to the, or parallel to the slope, all the way to up Highway 34. Still on the north side, still the side we want it on. However, it's continuing to move to the west. 
I was happy to hear those uh, the aircraft flying over because that's more retardant that is focused on reducing that rate of spread. So reducing how quickly fire moves to the west. So crews can finish that work I described in, in Cedar Park and we can plug them in and focus more on tying that piece off from the, the top of that very steep drainage all the way back down to Highway 34 over the coming operational period. Once that's done, and once we're able to secure the edge above Highway 34 where it runs along the highway, then our confidence will increase that fire will not see their spot across Highway 34 or spot across the road that goes up into Cedar Park and basically you know, threaten Cedar Park from that side. So that's where the emphasis is on for the rest of the day. We're also planning for contingencies um, to, if, if fire was to get across 34 and we're not able to immediately suppress it, what actions we can take. And we'll continue that planning and that preparation along with the planning and prep of homes further up towards Drake and then beyond towards Glenhaven until such time as we have a high degree of confidence that the fire is secured along Highway 34 and along that whole western edge. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jason Sieg, S-I-E-G. I'm the Acting Forest Supervisor on the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest and Pawnee National Grassland, which is